I V M. Hello and welcome to Football Portal Fantasy Football Show. My name is Saru. Baru is on Skype. With me, Baru, say hi. What's up? And also with request, a lot of people requested Reban to come back because they obviously found some value in what he says, and so we've just called back Reban. Reban, say hello again. Hi guys. <laughs> All right. So the format is the same as what it was last week as well. Let's go. Uh, the first question I have for you guys is now Obameyang is going to start. to play from the left or the right i don't know from where he's playing but he's not going to play from the center is it time to get obameyang out of the team rebant why don't you start uh, i think if you do want to get obameyang out kane is the only like for like transfer according to me okay but let's start so, with the question is it should obameyang be gotten out of the team given his value and i think you should stick with him that's a season long keeper you have there he may not be giving you captain halls day, uh, week in week out but with a consistent 6 points or 7 since he is often at you know getting that single bonus point not two or three since mm. we discussed that last time if you remember mm. so i think he's worth keeping oh and arsenal have a good run of fixtures in a couple of game weeks you mean after the after they play liverpool in game week 3 right after liverpool so they have a fixture at home against spurs i think or bamiang does score in that one and post that they definitely have a good run okay baru a uh, question let's to like let's say a contrary question is because liverpool has enough defenders and they're not really defending well and almost a lot of fpl teams have either one or two liverpool defenders and liverpool are conceding enough chances for team to score is it okay the question is twofold the same question about obamayang to obamayang to you as well should teams basically at least have only one liverpool defender instead of two given that they keep conceding goals Yeah, the early strategy of going for like double downing on defenders isn't like really working out. So I think it obviously, I mean, it's it's common sense right now to just spread that risk across multiple teams. Hmm. So you have to stick to like just one Liverpool defender. Looking at the way they've been playing, and plus the next game is against Arsenal, and uh, I think Arsenal might. I mean, Arsenal definitely won't let Liverpool keep a, a clean sheet. Is that hope or is that some sort of analysis? No, looking at how top heavy Arsenal is right now, um, I think they will manage to like get a few a goal or a goal. <laughs> Can you Goals say enough? <laughs> Can you say that again fully, properly? <laughs> <laughs> I said. <laughs> एक गोल तो आ जाएगा भैया अच्छा आर्सनल से एक गोल आ जाएगा ओके हैव एनी ऑफ यू थॉट अबाउट यू नो सेइंग दैट यू नो माय टीम इज कंप्लीटली रॉन्ग आई नीड टू जस्ट यूज द वाइल्ड कार्ड बिकॉज आई एम हैविंग दोस मैसिव फीलिंग्स राइट नाउ अबाउट वाइल्ड कार्ड एंड आई थिंक माय टीम फॉर्मेशन इज प्रॉब्ली नॉट राइट रेबांत डू यू थिंक यू आर गोइंग टू यूज द वाइल्ड कार्ड और डू यू गेट द फीलिंग दैट दे इनफ चेंजेस फॉर यू टू मेक इन योर टीम दैट यू प्रॉब्ली नीड टू डू द वाइल्ड कार्ड Did have that feeling. I pro was about to pull the wild card trigger, but I somehow managed to not do that. So I have a couple of issues in my team. So Stones is now injured, and apparently he'll not be back for this game week as well. That's a clean sheet gone for me because I trust City to keep clean sheets. Mm-hmm. Then another issue for my team was Fraser and Wilson, who have absolutely done nothing at all. In Actually, Wilson has provided two assists, but the, I expect a lot more from someone like him. And with their next game against Chelsea, uh, with against City, hmm. I definitely didn't want them. Then I have Lucas Moura, who has who got benched, and I think won't will continue to get benched because Son is back. Yeah. So a couple of uh, and lastly, as you mentioned, I have double Liverpool, and they're certainly not looking very assured. So yeah. wanted to use it. But resisted the urge, and now I removed Fraser and Wilson and gotten Kane and Cantwell instead. So you've taken a negative this for this week. No, I saved the transfer last week. Wow, man, that's amazing. And Baru, if I remember you telling me earlier in the week that you already made the transfers for your team. Yeah. Why would you make your transfer so early instead of just waiting on, let's say, some sort of injury updates and stuff like that? No, I just wanted to avoid the Fraser uh, fall. in value because uh, 
I mean, this week there have been a lot of like transfers that have got, uh, you know, that have gone against Fraser, hmm. and he was his his price drop was like pretty evident. All right. So I thought I'll just, you know, skip that and get ahead to it. All right, Reban, what are the things you learnt in game week two, or what surprised you, or what made you just quite happy about game week two? Uh, nothing made me happy about game. <laughs> <laughs> only thing actually, one thing did was a positive. A uh, lot of people went for Salah over Sterling. I chose form over fixtures, so I went Sterling, and he did score. I think he would have scored another one, but yeah, it didn't happen. From a learning point of view, definitely the Liverpool duo is because of Adrian. I guess mm-hmm. they're just not the same unit anymore. Mane is someone who is. Catching a lot of eyeballs, including mine. Mane has outscored uh, Salah in terms of goals and points as well. If I am not wrong, in 2019. Yes, that is. So a that's start. someone I'm looking at because he does free that extra one mil. Okay, Baru, did you learn anything? Learn from what? Liverpool's performance? <laughs> no, like what have you learned? In game, what week, what yeah. have you learned in game week two, or what surprised you in game week two? So it's not like a game week two or a game week one thing. I mean, it's just like game week X, where every time I realize that my team looks like really good on paper, <laughs> but <laughs> game weeks done, none of my players are like really performing this time. And uh, <laughs> like Kumar, uh, SPL hero. Yeah, we have to mention that Kumar of- is unwell. Otherwise, he would love to be on the podcast and rub it in our faces on how well he's doing. So, did you see that? Yeah, he's doing really, really well, man. I mean. It's funny how uh, we getting uh, experts from outside when we had yeah. one <laughs> right in front. Yeah, ghar ki murgi dal barabar, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. rajma. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so you basically are saying that whatever team you choose, it just basically looks good on paper. Yeah, I mean, uh, the players that I've have been taking, they have been performing. Uh, like just all right, just below the the bonus mark. Like let's take Obama Yang for example. He's been he scored two goals in two games, hmm. but he managed to get like just one bonus point out of it because everyone else, I mean, because of his own uh, conversion rate apparently. Hmm. So that guy was my captain last week also, as and he just got me like the extra six points. I Whereas see. everyone else has been loading up on Sterling, who is still not in my team, hmm. and Salah <laughs> drew a blank. Okay. So yeah, it wasn't a good week. Oh man. Okay. So there is a team which is joining our football total fantasy cup on the FPL website. Its name is When Harry Met Delhi. So <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's going to like he'll be added next week. Any thoughts on the name, Baru? Do you like the name When Harry Met Delhi? Yeah, I think it's uh, pretty on point. <laughs> <laughs> but Delhi doesn't even play these days, Revan. That's a question to you, Delhi Ali. He he was like you know he was central to Spurs team, but now he doesn't really play. Why why do you think he doesn't play anymore? I just think they have too many players from an attacking mindset, and if I'm not wrong, he's not match fit as well. I'll have to search up on that. But yeah, definitely not a fantasy prospect anymore. Oh. Yeah, he's out. In fact, I think everyone from the Spurs midfield, even Son for that matter, who will. Be available for the next game week because he got a red card in the last uh, in yeah. the last game week of the last year hmm. in the last season. I mean, so I think this should be a match where he could he could get a start, and he's certainly someone I'll be looking out for. Yes, but so does that mean that you don't you can't really predict Spurs midfield because a lot of people have taken Lucas Mora. Now that Son is coming back, you don't even know if Lucas Mora is going to start the game or Son is going to start the game, right? So is it good to just avoid the Spurs midfield for the game week three and four? I think if you want someone from Spurs, it has to be Harry Kane for the next couple of game weeks. But yeah, in the long run, I see value in Son. Because I think he is very integral to them. I think last season he carried them for a very long time. So definitely someone I want. Mm. Baru, who 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 of the Spurs team do you have in your FPL? Kane's my captain for this coming game week, right? Yeah. And is there anyone else? And the next two weeks, actually. I mean, <laughs> because he always tends he likes scoring against Arsenal. That and, is, uh, and who are they playing? They're playing Newcastle. That's the only Spurs. Yeah, no. playing Newcastle at home. 
All right. So I think Kane and Son should actually be the picks from Spurs. Mm, yeah, and the last question before we take a break is, you know, this chap called Puki. He is he a dif- is he considered a differential? I don't think so, right? I think he's still under fifteen percent. Really? So somewhat of a differential. Yep. So Puki, after doing all he did, and people raving about him, is still under fifteen percent of ownership. He's actually no, so I'll correct it. He's around eighteen percent. Still a lot less. Don't you think? Yeah, that's a less. No, why? Why do you think people don't want to take Puki? Is it because they think that it's just a like you know flash in the pan and he's not going to continue? I guess that should be the only reason, right? I've seen a lot of people arguing about the fact that his form is very un unsustainable. So he's got an xG of around one point seven or something. Okay. And he's already scored four goals. That is not something that will happen game week. Uh, game week after game week, a hat trick is probably the only hat trick he'll score this year. But xG this of one point seven would mean per game he would probably score two goals, one or two goals. Doesn't isn't that what it translates to? His total xG. Oh, okay. So the two games, his total xG is point eight five, point eight five. Yeah, so like just dividing it two. I know, but you know, given how Chelsea play and how they concede so many chances. Yeah. Right. Can. I'm actually backing him to score again. Exactly. Baru, do you have Puki in your team? Nope. Why? What's with you and not taking players who actually score points? <laughs> <laughs> like, do uh, you like? Do you? What are you trying to prove in FPL if not score points? Or do you have so that attitude that <laughs> that you know I will take no, some other not. player and show these people how to do it? No, more than not scoring points. It's uh not wanting to take a hit of minus 4 yeah so i used two transfers i got oba and fraser out mm-hmm. i got uh not looking at the fixture i got cantwell and i got kane in so i got uh, same transfer what oh, did nice. you guys just discuss this whole thing before like making the transfers Yeah, we discussed this on uh, Reban's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> I think we should take a break right now. After the break, we are going to do the same things: the three players to look out for in game week three, and one differential pick, and also who is the captaincy choices and why. So stay stick around, guys. Stay tuned to Football Twaddle. Hello and welcome to another awesome week at the IVM Podcast Network. If you're not following us on social media, please do. We are at IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Don't forget to take a screenshot of whatever podcast of ours that you're listening to. Take a screenshot and put in a comment about what you think about the show, and we will reshare it from our social media pages. Here's what's in store for you this week. On the scene and the unseen, Amit Verma is in conversation with historian Srinath Raghavan. They talk about the complicated history of Jammu and Kashmir, the recent abrogation of Article 370, and what the future might hold. On Paisa Vesa, Anupam Gupta is joined by Vishal Sabarwal, EVP E-Commerce and Digital Marketing at HDFC Life. They discuss life insurance and its importance, different investment options offered by HDFC Life, and more. On Keeping It Queer, Naveen and Farhad talk to drag queen Sushant Devgikar. About his journey of representing one's community and why is it important? On our Canada podcast Thalle Harte, Varun Ramachandra talks to Pawan Srinath about his life in political sciences and political philosophies. On football, should ball Gaurav, Karthik, and Sivaram discuss the Manchester City versus Tottenham match. They touch upon the Neymar saga and Roberto Pereira dancing to Bazigar O Bazigar. On the Geek Fruit podcast, Jishnu and Dinkar break down and give their take on the brand new TV series The Boys. On Golgappa, host Trupti Khamkar is joined by Daniel Mendonca, a gender rights activist who talks about being sex positive and inclusiveness. He also shares his experience of representing India at the UN. On What a Player, Mikhail Akash and Siddharth talk about Chris Gayle breaking Lara's record, Kedar Jadhav's comparison with Vix, Rafael Nadal and his sneakers, Arsenal fans, and a lot more. On Simplified Chuck and Sricket talk to crossword setter for the Hindu Tony Sebastian about crossword puzzles and what goes into setting them. And with that, let's get you back onto your show. Hello and welcome back to Football Twaddle. Rebant and Baru are still on the phone. Say hi, guys. Hi, guys. I'm 
What's up? See, Reban, that's the energy level we are looking for. <laughs> <laughs> After that kind of a game week, I don't think you should expect a lot of energy from me. Uh, dude, how many points did you get in game week two? I think I scored thirty. Oh, that is the Baru and Saru levels. The energy has dropped more after I found out that uh, me and him have made the same changes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he's like, oh shit, <laughs> my life sucks. <laughs> <laughs> भाई साहब ये बॉलीवुड पर एटलीस्ट अंग्रेजी गाने तो गा लो गॉड स्टर्लिंग और के डी बी आई थिंक सो हिस्टोरिकली मैं सिटी इज ऑलवेज थ्रैश्ड बोन मॉथ so one of them definitely will be up for the match i think certainly a captain candidate as well so why can't you just like take both of them isn't that like a good shout as well i think that's a wonderful strategy i couldn't do that because i have double city and i wanted double city defense and i wanted uh, kane as well oh so i had compromise on that all right historically when you say they have to they thrash bournemouth it's always like 4 nil final types right it's always a 4 nil or a one but here's the here's the funny thing most of this thrashing so to come at the etihad and this is at uh, this is away yeah so maybe it will not end up being that high scoring hmm. but the last game these guys played city had around 82% possession over 25 shots ended up scoring a single goal so yeah anything can happen but can't war rule it out Roll what out? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever goal City <laughs> scores. <laughs> How do I take war in the team? <laughs> yeah, Reban, please tell us. How do we take war into account in our strategies? <laughs> mm, if you take Spurs players, that's an automatic offer for you. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> All right. So you're saying Sterling or KDB or can be both. That's one. What's the next one? The next one is Kane. Yes. Easy. Very easy fixture. They're playing the Newcastle, right? they they playing newcastle yeah at their home easy fixture kane should be up for it i think this is the game where you expect your 11 million striker to score at least a brace which are the teams you think who concede the most shots against them like i i remember reading a day ago that chelsea is one of the teams where most shots have been like you know Not scored. What do you call? It? They had. They were more shots against Chelsea, but which are the other teams? Arsenal is, I think, in the top two or top three of conceding of chances. Yeah. Oh. Okay. All right. Ah, uh, the third choice for you, Rebant. From a def from the defenders, I think Van Bissaka is someone you can. take they um, they the playing is they playing crystal they're palace playing crystal palace want to cry and break down <laughs> so um, generally ex players often do very well against their former club, former clubs dude there must From, be no statistic like you know you, you're just pulling stuff up now no 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 this is this is this happens all the time you can just watch old matches actually this happens all the time i don't know why the happens. only thing that comes to my mind is adebayor scoring for spurs against arsenal and running across the pitch and celebrating was he against van van persie oh. against arsenal ha huh, but by that time arsenal was a spent force right mm, exactly <laughs> all right anyway so you are talking about and van bissaka actually one big reason is the fact that he's always always up for the bonus and if uh united win probably say a uh, one nil or a two nil i think he could be up for two or three bonus points wasn't he the man of the match in their game against wolves van bissaka not too sure all right uh so baru who are your three picks so kane son and um, i think the third could probably be sala because he does score against arsenal hmm. not just score he also like assists A goal like whenever he's playing against Arsenal. Salah. Oh yeah, that leads to the bigger debate. Salah is so expensive. Mane is not, and Mane, as I think Reban also said earlier in the podcast, has as many more goals than Salah in 2019. Doesn't it make sense to probably like remove Salah and put Mane in? Yeah, that's a good point. And then it you. It could work out. 
the the only reason i am still i still haven't moved for mane is the fact that one you're wasting a transfer in a way to hmm. get someone from the same team hmm. and salah is on penalty and he recently had an interview where he said he wants and he will be scoring a lot of penalties oh he's not <laughs> like he, so he's not he's like pogba the plan. he's not a pogba you're saying <laughs> he's not a pogba and actually like the way he takes penalties who salah yeah a uh, good strong run up it's it towards one side very strong unlike those stuttering run ups which i am never too confident when i look at dude pogba when he had stuttering run ups he used to score ma- more penalties run-up. than when he stopped taking those stuttering run ups <laughs> that is a stat you can yeah, put up anywhere <laughs> <laughs> but i'm surprised okay why none of you guys have you know spoken about any west ham players or like as picks that's, that's the differential i was going to talk about actually all right lanz L- L- oh god lanzini but watford is playing west ham right so yeah watford watford have been terrible actually conceded the most number of points from all the teams for the two game weeks conceded as in like most number of shots I'm assuming oh, the points, points, FPL points. Oh, oh, where where can I find that stat? Uh, I actually use this R script called FPL Scrapper. So yeah, you use that. I can teach you offline probably. Yeah, 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 please. I mean, I need all sorts of help. So you Lanzini is your differential. Lanzini is a strong differential. I think West Ham have got a great attacking team. They've not really fired up. as such hmm. but lanzini is someone all the attacking in uh, he gets involved in a lot of attacking moves for west ham okay so the assist potential is is very strong i'm not too sure if he is going to be at the end of goals but yeah assists is something you can expect from yeah and lanzini probably is one of the players to look for because west ham after playing watford next week they play norwich so you know they have at least the next two game weeks seem to be relatively easier for west ham and if they could just like you know pick up some form i think some of their attacking players can do well so yeah, yeah. lanzini is a good one baru who is your differential my differential hmm. uh, uh Let me see. Who will I put in my team now? Um, I'm actually going with. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't have a differential right now. Everyone just seems like something. I I have a differential. One more differential for Baru. No, for yeah, for yeah, him. Where is this thing? <laughs> so the differential is. It's an interesting one. It's Che Adams, and the reason why I think he's going to be a good one is every time I've seen Southampton play. He's been at the end. He's been at the end of a couple of good chances. He's just taken a price drop, so he's now at five point nine. That's a very tempting price point if you want to get someone else in at the expense of your forward line. So Southampton is playing Manchester United in game week four, and in game week three they are playing. They are playing Brighton. So Brighton, I have not. Considered enough, sh- like lot of shots, they have been defensively quite solid as well. So yeah, funnily, because from what I read, uh, Potter is a very attacking manager, so I expected teams to score against Brighton, but that hasn't happened. Yeah, so Louis Dunk is not a good shout then. Louis Dunk is a brilliant shout. He's been at the end of. Uh, he's a bonus magnet, and he gets the odd goal here and there. So yeah, great pick. So Baru, you have Louis Adams, Louis Dunk, or Shea Adams to choose from. What's your pick? None of the above. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. What do you think is going to happen in the United versus Crystal Palace match? Like, we'll be bored to death. Apart from that, I don't know. I don't know because I'm still thinking if I should stick to the double Liverpool defense or should I like <coughs> uh, get the out. problem is that I've got like only Kelly and Holebas on the bench. No. Oh, okay. And Holebas is West Ham at home, hmm. and Kelly faces United away. Dude, I have to tell something. I think United, their defense is quite strong. They have been quite solid in the first two game weeks. It may be like an aberration or whatever, but it's not a bad thing to have a United defender. So, if you want to put like Aaron Van Bissaka or someone, I think you should seriously consider putting him. I think they'll get quite. Oh, I'm not any substitution. I mean. Transfers, right? Is this is a substitution. Now, what he made to change for the week? Okay, but I'm saying I'm saying that United probably you can look at one of the defenders. They are playing. They are playing Crystal Palace and Southampton. Yeah, I think, 
United defender could do a whole lot of good is the fact that they are owned by so many people. Hmm. So I've re- like from whatever FPL I've played, what I've come to realize is no matter how bad United is playing, there will be United fans who will take their players in hordes that too. So Aaron Van Bissaka has something like thirty five percent ownership at the moment, and it's going to increase from here on since he's playing really well. He's getting those bonus points. Hmm. So if you don't have someone from United to you know at least hedge the kind of points. Uh, Man Bissaka could make out from his clean sheets. Hmm. You will lose out. That's no. something I've ag- I've been pondering over as well whether I should remove stones for Man Bissaka. Yeah. So one before I give my value pick or my picks and differential, I one thing I want to talk about is you know getting onto the bandwagon last two years. Like I think in the first fantasy episode, also Baru said he got onto the Obama Young bandwagon last season at game week thirty seven, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so this whole differential business, or you know, it the game basically rests on getting backing some two or three players who will give you points for five six game weeks and just finding newer players who will give similar points. So is. My question is: Is I think Puki is a uh, really good. After two games, he's playing Chelsea as well. I think Puki is. You think Puki has the legs to go for like eight to ten game weeks to give you enough points? I think he has the chance. He has a chance of scoring both the game weeks up from now on. So he's got Chelsea. I think he can score. He's got West Ham again, a very manageable game. Hmm. Then he has City. Mm, probably. Again, a fifty-fifty. Actually, no. I think he won't be able to score against City. You know, I'm very, very, I'm very pro City. I think they're very strong defensively. Even against Spurs, I think those two goals that the the scoreline doesn't reflect what actually happened in the game. Mm, all right. So my three picks would be Puki, Martial, and uh, I don't know Lanzini. Yeah, I think Puki, Martial, and Lanzini. I think are my. Things I and from what if I'm not wrong, any one of them could be a differential as well. I think the ownership for all, all these three people are quite low, so it's better to like you know at least cash on him. You, Marshall looks like he is going to score every time United run forward. Marshall looks like he could do something. I have a strong feeling he'll have a good FPL season. If he continues playing as the number nine, I think he will. He will right, and he's so generally over the the last couple of seasons. Every time he's hit form, some somehow it's, he's just not been able to sustain it. And ultimately, people have called him for the lack of strong attitude and whatnot. I think this year looks different. Yeah, and also in this Pogba versus Rashford fight, I think penalty duties will be given to Martial very soon. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Who are you trying to keep as a goalkeeper? Uh, Third, who do I keep? It doesn't matter. Whoever I keep, it gives me only one point. I'm in the same boat as you. I don't know. I think Pope is decent for a keeper, but yeah, I'm keeping Pickford for this week. They're facing Aston Villa. Oh yeah. So Pickford, Pickford is a great keeper, and he has a great penalty saving record as yep. well. So. Yeah, and he's already increased point one. Yes. Right? Oh, before we move to captaincy picks, uh, we, I have to tell listeners that please check before you transfer your teams for Lucas Dean because it said he's injured, but he's back in the training ground. So you guys need to check for it. Otherwise, and Everton, you and yeah, Everton's playing Aston Villa. Pickford, Lucas Dean, just like fill like all the Everton defense. Yeah. So captaincy picks, Rebanth. Uh. I'm personally going with K. Like I mentioned, uh, Norwich yes. at home. Yes, it's a great fixture too. Like I wouldn't be surprised if he scores like a hat trick. Oh, God. it's the perfect game. Okay, Baru, your captain Sipek. Same. Same, Harry Kane. Yep. So all of you guys are expecting Harry Kane to actually do something this time. I am expecting. See, Harry he just needs to outscore Salah. Huh. Because um, looking at Salah's form against Arsenal, I think he's going to be the major captain pick, captaincy choice for most people. Yeah, I think captaincy split more or less three ways. It's Sterling, Kane, and uh, Salah. So, so, oh yeah. So let's see. Sterling is playing Bournemouth, and who City's can score a lot of goals. Kane is playing Newcastle. And Salah is playing Liverpool. That that's a tougher choice. I don't. Arsenal. 
Arsenal, yeah. So Salah's been Arsenal. Yes, if <laughs> yeah, correct. But Arsenal, <coughs> it's not like really a tougher choice. Really? Okay. I was actually thinking. See, the thing about Arsenal is that unlike uh, other teams who know that they you know are underdogs and stuff, mm-hmm. Arsenal still tries to like punch above its weight. Mm-hmm. And in all of these matches, they actually uh, instead of like sitting back and defending and hitting them on the counter, they actually go out of the way and try to you know attack the team in front. And that's when they get caught. um uh, napping at the back and that's all how it's always been you know uh, in all these years because uh every time you look at an arsenal game against a big side they've only managed to like you know uh, scrap a draw or like a victory when they have been sitting back and absorbing the pressure yeah especially in the new new side uh, you know the new look tottenham's and uh, you know liverpool and all mm-hmm. otherwise uh, when arsenal play the usual way they just it's not like a 1-0 defeat i mean it's always like a 4-0 5-0 you know it's it's a heavy defeat because they just don't know how to defend hmm i don't know i think puki also could be a good one he's he's playing chelsea and if rudiger is not back he could even if he scores like one goal and a an assist that would give like 16 17 points as captaincy pick but otherwise it's sterling versus kane i think pretty much it's in my head at least it's sterling versus kane for this weekend yeah yeah the yeah. actually one point i want to make is That under Unai Emery, Arsenal, at least away, aren't very attacking. So I wouldn't be surprised if we played three at the back. But this, a counterpoint would be that despite playing three at the back, we still lost heavily against Liverpool last season. Hmm. So. So anything can happen here. Yeah. So in FPL you can't say anything can happen. That cannot <laughs> that cannot be like a final conclusion. We don't know anything can happen. <laughs> I I do expect Arsenal to concede at least a couple of goals. Okay. Uh just for on that so, game what what's your yeah. prediction for Liverpool versus Arsenal? Mm, I think Liverpool win 3-1. What? Baru you? 2-1 to Liverpool. I think it will be a entertaining 6-6. <laughs> 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 yeah, on that, yeah. on that, on that, on that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's time we have to give a shout out to the leader on the football twaddle team, and her name. Uh, yeah, football twaddle league. Her name is Klopp Karni, or that's not her name really. Like her team's name is Klopp Karni. Her name is Ankita Kulkarni. she was in the top 2 or 3 like you know in game week 1 and now she is number 1 she's just killing it she has de bruyne and sterling in the team she has puki she has sala lucas dean and wilson and those are the people who gave her points so yeah kudos klop karni she she's like predicted this week's podcast and just put sterling de bruyne <laughs> everyone she's just put it yeah but i Yes. All right. Ah, uh, please, guys, follow us at the rate Footy Twaddle on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Would be Football Twaddle. And Rebanth, thank you very much again for coming in. Thanks, guys. And Baru, as always, a pleasure. All right. Okay. This is Saru signing off. Bye bye. Hello everyone, welcome to Tech Careers in the New, the new podcast series presented by Accenture. I'm your host Shiladitya Mukhopadhyay. In this podcast series, we'll get you the latest and greatest in the world of technology that's shaping the future of business as we know it. We're talking intelligent platforms, cloud, AI, blockchain, extended reality and a whole lot more. Every fortnight on Wednesdays, we'll have for you a hot topic with expert speakers from Accenture. talking about top trends in the space how these are changing the world and creating growth across industries and importantly we'll tell you how you can learn more build your skills and expertise to grow and stay relevant in your career episodes out on the IVM podcast app or wherever you get your podcast from this is the amazing story of something awesome once chuck decided to start a podcast and so he did the end okay that is a crappy story but i've got some really cool stories over at my new show the origin of things on this podcast i look at the stories of how brands came into being 
and sometimes evolved out of quite unexpected circumstances. And to make it really fun, I reveal the name of the brand and sometimes a category only at the very end. The show is 5 to 7 minutes per episode and perfect for trivia junkies and brand nerds, especially those with short attention spans. New episodes out every Wednesday on IVM podcast app or website or any podcast app or site that you happen to prefer. End of story, they lived happily ever after.